For those of you that have not heard of it, basically the PlayStation Portal is an interesting little device that Sony released that I have been very skeptical of, as uh, I think the technical term is I've been a skeptic, skeptiboy, skeptiboy. Um, and some people have reviewed it, and that's what this video is that you're seeing here. We're gonna play it with volume here in just a second because this reveals something really shocking about the PlayStation Portable. Basically what this thing is supposed to be is a remote way of playing games off of your PS5. So it doesn't use PlayStation Now, it does not use xCloud, it doesn't use any other service than that. It just streams from your PlayStation 5 to this device. That's it. Now it can stream from like miles and miles away, from states away, it could stream from your home PS5, the or PS5. The only downside would be that, you know, latency would be a thing, but it can do that. So it's supposed to be kind of the ultimate portable way of playing your PlayStation games. Cool idea, right? There's a couple little weird things about it, um, such as the price point. There's other things uh, that have frustrated some people. But at the very least, you know, I was like, the lack of cloud computing support is a bummer, but I can still see why people might get it. But we found out something that is wholly unacceptable as far as I'm concerned, okay? And that's Ooh, what I'm going to play, is now a red okay? Flag. I made it to two months. I don't know what Ooh. do or what say. Story of my life, basically. Love you, keep up the good work. Thank you, my friend. Thank you, my friend. And two months, yeah, I, we're on our way. Thank you. Cheers. Um, so this is from the Black Viking or yeah, I think it's from the Black Viking. I'm not sure exactly who did this. I'm not uh, familiar with their stuff, but whoever this is did a great job on this um, because nobody else has talked about it. And I don't know why, because this is a huge deal to me. This is an ultimate deal breaker. Full stop. This makes this product almost entirely useless for uh, anybody traveling, which I thought was the point of this. I packed it up and took it to Dunkin' Donuts, which as a New Englander, I am required by law to visit at least once per month. Dunkin' Donuts! I hope to test its performance on public Wi-Fi, but this was a total bust. Dunkin', like many chains, airports, libraries, hotels, and other locations offering guest Wi-Fi, requires you to visit a website and acknowledge its terms of service before allowing you onto their network. And the portal has no web browser to allow such an interaction. <laughs> that is a huge bummer because pretty much any place you'd want to use it outside your house is going to require that initial login pay. I packed it up. That is a huge deal. I, I saw this while sitting in a hotel room. And when I saw it, I immediately was like, the, I literally thought maybe I should get a PlayStation portal. And like, we'll do like a little review while I'm traveling and I can try it on like the plane Wi-Fi, streaming like through the satellite, see what latency is like on that. It would be really cool to be able to access your home console from a plane. That would be awesome. Or like, uh, or to play a PlayStation game on a plane, you know, that'd be amazing. But even beyond that, just to have a hotel Wi-Fi, log into the hotel Wi-Fi, pay for the $8 upgrade for the business class, whatever, and then be able to play your PlayStation remote in your hotel room while traveling. To me, that would actually justify getting one of these things. That'd be great. You can't. You can't because there is no browser on the device because they don't want you to log into the xCloud website and stream Xbox games to it. That's why. <laughs> and so, because of that, they don't have a browser, so you cannot acknowledge the terms of service for any of these, you know, Wi-Fi networks, whether it's Starbucks, your hotel, McDonald's Wi-Fi, whatever. You, you just can't acknowledge the terms of service, so you can't connect to the network. So basically, this thing is only decent or usable if you have a really good mobile hotspot from your phone and you use your data plan or if you're in your house. Now, I know some people have said that this would be the ultimate pooping companion to be able to play your PlayStation 5 games while sitting on the toilet. And personally, I don't know what it, the deal is with some people, but like, I'm not sitting on the toilet for hours on end. Like, it doesn't really have that much use to me. I'm like, by the time I would sit down to do my business and like turn it on, log into the game and start playing, I'm, I'm probably done. Like, 
you go in, you do your business, you get up, you leave. Like I'm not sitting there yo-yoing stuff. You know? 99 pence through super chat. Bro, the device is awesome. Have an ally in deck and this is better. Of course they will update it with a firmware update. SD only just got contrast. Okay, treble. You know I love you. You know I love you. But you just said this is better than an ROG ally. I think that's cap. <laughs> I think that's cap. I mean, I, I, I'm glad that you're finding use for it, of course, and thank you for the five. Um, but I, I don't know how this is better than a device that can run modern games natively anywhere, whether it's on a plane or in a hotel room. Like, it's the ultimate travel gaming device. Whereas this, I guess the main question is, how are you using it? Are you using it just as like the toilet buddy? In which case, as a PlayStation player, yeah, I could see this being a really nice, handy thing. But like, that's the my problem with the PlayStation Portal is like, there is one use case where this makes sense. And it's like the crapper Porter Potty Buddy. And in every other use case, it's basically useless. And, and for me, that's what's really baffling is it's like, it appeals to a very, very small subset of the population, but people are acting like it's, it's just like the, the Ubisoft, whatever it's called, the Logitech, it was not Ubisoft. It was the Logitech cloud something. So I, I just honestly don't, I don't personally get it. <laughs> I imagine the people who would get this for Christmas and don't have a PS5. Oh God, God emperor. That would be that, that honestly, that'd be really, really funny. And also really sad, uh, at the same time, it's like one year I remember, uh, I had gotten a PS4. So this was probably like 2016 and somebody was trying to be really nice. They were trying to be really nice. They had heard me talking about a game I wanted. I don't remember what it was. It was something in 2016 that was out and was hot. And so they got it for me, but they got it on Xbox. And I, at the time I didn't have an Xbox one, so I couldn't play it. And I was like, but they were so excited for me to open it. They were so pumped and I didn't want to take that away from them. So I was like, yeah, I can't wait to try it. Like, you know, how do you sell it? Oh man. It was, it was heartbreak. I think we've all been there. I think we've all been there where it's like, you don't want to hurt their feelings, but it's also like, oh, you know, it's, it's just funny with the PlayStation portal. I can see why some people would say that this is a great God fit for them. So faking, donated five <laughs> so faking. Um, but honestly, for me, I'm looking at it and I'm like, if I bought this thing, I think I might use it for 20 minutes on the day I bought it and then seriously never touch it again. Like never touch it again. Um, yeah, the poop station portal. Yeah, I, it's like maybe for some people, I, I can like I can craft situations where it could be a good fit where like, you have one TV and your PS5 is connected to that TV in the living room, for example, but then your partner or spouse or whoever, or maybe you have roommates, they want to use that TV like commonly and frequently. Maybe they play on an Xbox on it. So instead of removing the PS5 to like your room or something, you play on the PlayStation Portable so they can do their thing and you can be playing your PlayStation 5 game while in the house so it doesn't take that up. And I, I can, I can see that being a situation where this could be handy for 200 bucks or whatever this costs. I would say like, you should just go buy a little monitor and just play on that, like move the PlayStation five. So personally, I, I don't get the appeal of the PlayStation portal. I would love to know what the sales numbers are like. I, I really just have no idea how it's being received. I've got to imagine that this does not do that well. Cause again, it's like. One tenth of 1% of gamers, I think, could find a use for this thing. And then you have to wonder if they have the money for it because it's pretty expensive. And it has some huge major design flaws like that, not allowing you to log into Wi-Fi's that to me, ding it like multiple points out on a scale out of 10. Like, And the only reason it exists like that and the only reason that happened is because they want to prevent you from using a competitor service on it, even though it would make the experience for their customers better. And it's just, you know, it's a classic PlayStation. He took my thing.